Hi everyone, and welcome to this video on Sharkapp's rules, and specifically how to do quick math on the MCAT even in the bio biochem section. So let's get started. Okay, so for a very quick review, Shargaff's rule states that there has to be equal amounts, a one-to-one -one ratio, of adenine and thymine and cytosine and guanine in the genome of an organism. And the reason why this is, is that when the DNA is in its double helix shape, right, I'll draw a bad double helix here, it's held in that double helix by hydrogen bonds between these two sets of bases, adenine and thymine and cytosine and guanine. And so in order for that structure to hold its shape, they have to have equal amounts in order to pair up and do the hydrogen bonding, right? So on the MCAT, this will often be tested in the context of a percentage. So they'll give you the percentage of one of the nucleotides and ask you for the percentage of the others or of the base pairing content. So let's go through a couple of examples. Let's start with a very basic example, which is, let's say that there's 100 nucleotides, right? So there's just 100 nucleotides in an organism's genome. And let's say that 40 of them, 40 of them are adenine. So by definition, because we are following Shargaff's rule, that means that there has to be an equal amount of thymine. So there also has to be 40 of thymines, right? And since we only have 100, that means 80 of 100 are adenine and thymines, right? Base pairs together. So we just have to see what's left, right? So 100 minus 80 is 20, right? So what's left over for both the C and G is 20 base pairs, and since there has to be equal amounts of both cytosines and guanines, we just divide this number by two, and we get 10 of each. So our ratio is 40, 40, 10, 10, or 4, 4, 1, 1, right, for all four base pairs. And this math will follow no matter what. This is why it's a rule. So we can use it even for more complex problems. So now let's go ahead and look at a classic MCAT style discrete problem. An organism's genome is comprised of 23% adenine. What percentage of the genome is guanine? Pause the video, take a second, and try to figure this out based on the rules we just talked about, and then I'll go through how to make sure you ensure that your math is correct on test day. Just like we did in that easy example, I want you to always start off by writing out the base pairs. Even though that's really obvious, I know you guys know this by now, it's still helpful to just set it up on your scratch paper. A, T, C, G, right? You know it this way, even when you're stressed out on test day, you can follow along with the rules as they're written. So let's go ahead and use this setup to make our math really easy. So 23% is adenine, we know by definition, just like we did before, right, same setup, 23% also has to be for thymine, which means the adenine-thymine content, right, and we put those together, is 46%. Now again, there can only be 100%, so we can say, okay, 100% minus 46%, is however much we have of CG content, both cytosines and guanines, right? So doing the math out, 100 minus 46 is 54. So 54% for both cytosine and guanine. And again, same thing, we have to just evenly divide this by two because we know that there's even amounts of cytosine and guanine. And so we'll split it up, right? Half of 54% goes this way half goes this way, 54% divided by two. And if, listen, if simple math is your weak point, just write it out, write it out long division style, right? Two goes into two, two times, 14, 27, right? It takes an extra second and you can guarantee that you got the answer, right? We're writing it all the way out here, but of course on test day, you can go right over 
and pick the answer C. Now, if we look at the answer options, just again, let's say you're running out of time on the MCAT, you gotta do this quick. It's definitely not gonna be 46%, right? Because we've got the 54, we know it's gonna be half of that. So we can eliminate that. We know that it's not gonna be 23 because our answers weren't exactly equal, right? So there's no way for guanine to have the same exact percentage as adenine. If that was true, it would be 25% all across the board, right? So we can eliminate that. And so what's left is 27 and 11. And what's nice is we could just look at 54 and know that half of 54 is gonna be greater than 11%. So you don't even need to do that simple math all the way out. You could make rounding judgments based on the numbers that you have. Okay, so one last thing, just to kind of prepare you for any eventuality on the MCAT, right? These types of questions are pretty straightforward. They could also ask you something like, what is the composition of single-stranded DNA? Single-stranded DNA. And it's a trick question a little bit because there's no way to know the composition of the single-stranded DNA unless you're given the entire strand, right? Because the whole reason we're able to do this math is because of the base pairing of a double-stranded DNA. So single-stranded DNA or mRNA, right? RNA of any kind, it could be any composition because it's just one strand and Chargaff's rule is only applying to the pairing of the double-stranded, right? That hydrogen-bonded double-stranded DNA. So one of the ways they could ask this is saying, can you determine the nucleotide composition of this single-stranded DNA? And they would be like, yes, yes, no, no, and why, right? So again, Chargaff's rules only applies to double-stranded DNA, which you know is going to be tested if they say anything like the organism's genome, right, or chromatin, right, the things that are showing that you have an in vivo double-stranded DNA acting as it normally is in the system. Thanks for joining me in this video, and check out the rest of this series for more math practice that can show up on the BioBioChem section of the MCAT.